Well, good afternoon, uh, members of council, uh, special guests in our crowd today. Also to the 22 attendees that have joined us via electronic media. Welcome to the Town of Steamboat's public council meeting this day, Thursday, April the 11th. It is 12.05 p.m. I would ask the member of council to move that we adopt the agenda as circulated. Moved by Council O'Brien, seconder. Second. Second. Council Maurice Hines, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Mr. Mayor, is, is, the, is the agenda circulated to the public? We, we talked about circulating to the public. Was, uh, okay. Perfect, yep. excellent. Thank you very much. Yep. So item number two, land acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge the town of Seville as the ancestral homeland of different populations of indigenous people. We also acknowledge with respect the rich histories and cultures of the Beothic, the Mi'kmaq, Innu, and Inuit of the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Item number three is the agenda has been circulated. I would move Ask for a mover to adopt the agenda. The move. Moved by Councilor Darren Roberts, seconder. Second. Second, Councilor O'Brien. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Item number four are the approval of minutes sent out by our management team to councilors. It was our previous meeting that took place two weeks ago on March 28, 2024. I had asked a member of council that we move that those minutes be adopted. So moved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Susan Gallo, <laughs> second, second Councilor Myra White. All in favor. Aye. 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 Carried. Any matters arising from those minutes? No matters arising? Okay. Uh, proclamations and delegations, we have none today. Okay, committee reports. So I'm going to turn it over to our Chair of uh, Finance, Councilor Myra White, for uh, item 5.1. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. I know it's online as well. <clears throat> the Finance Committee met on April the 8th, 2024, and the following items recommended for council approval. Accounts payable April the 11th, 2024, be it resolved to pay accounts payable for April the 11th, 2024, in the amount of $173,558.92. I so move. Move by Councillor Myra White, second. 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 Councillor. Uh, Just to break down the, the, the number $173,000, some of the larger numbers is $22,263.48 for Avidos, that's the maintenance contract on, on our the, the wastewater system or sewer, sewer system. 341160 for the laboratory services that checks our water supply and certain and the sewer treatment. There's a, a 2041 for a new brush kit for our equipment. 3935 for Bell Line for our telephone services. A large one is 23628.96 for chlorine for our water system. Another large one is waste management, which is their curbside garbage collection net, 31,476.98. Crane supplies, where we get a lot of our pipe and valves net for our water system and sewer system net, 363.12. Uh, asphalt produced coal packs for everlasting piles, 5951.29. Equipment hired 4,232. Uh, some lumber and stuff that public works use $2,424. Another large one is our gas and fuel for March, $13,825. And our safety supplies, batteries for flashlights and other safety supplies, $36,9402. And then uh, some parts for some of our equipment, $2,475.79. And that, that, that's the large, the large numbers, but another large number here is 25,411.48 for the regional waste management. So when you take the 25,000 there and add it to the 31 that we actually pay the contractor to pick it up, 
I mean, you're, you're looking at over $56,000 just for our, our curbside collection and disposal of it. So that's the largest numbers in the 173. You're going to all in favor? So you're going to you're going to have all a vote? in favor? Aye. 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 Item number two is a request for sponsorship for the Stephen Awards. Be it resolved to give a sponsorship in the amount of two thousand five hundred dollars to the Stephen Awards. I so move. Moved by Councilor Myra White, seconder. Second. Second, Councilor Laura Keller. Favor. Aye. 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 Item number three, request to approve the sale of Minnesota Drive and Connecticut Drive uh, corner lot. Be it resolved to approve the sale of Minnesota Drive and Con Connecticut Drive corner lot to GDR Enterprises based on the payment structure presented for three installments to be paid on April the 26th, August the 23rd, and December 30th, 2024. For a total of $441,969.27, I so move. Moved by Councillor White, uh, seconder. Second. Second, Councillor O'Brien. It's good to see. It's good to see all the work they're doing up there, and, and certainly now the construction is actually started on the building. Yeah. I noticed the contractor up there the uh, last couple of days putting in the forms for the footing, so it's it's going to be good to see it draw well to the ground. Yeah, I, I got to say. Uh, I give a lot of credit to uh, in the last year, the two years, we've done a lot of lobbying with provincial government, both with the premier and the different ministers that held the portfolio of health, Minister Haggy and our current minister, Tom Osborne. But we had in-depth meetings with the Health uh, Accord Committee uh, with Sister Elizabeth Davis and Dr. Palfrey, and we reiterated the need of a new facility in Stephenville. Uh, we had professionals, GPs, nurses, and all the uh, healthcare suite of professionals that exist in Stephenville operating in all buildings without proper HVAC. Uh, they were substandard, but accessibility was a big issue. And through great lobbying and effort, uh, this project is moving ahead. Uh, we have some early estimates, I think, from the meetings we had. Uh, Councilor Edward, that it's a possibility that this building could be ready by the end of December. It's a private sector, so great news for the town of Stateville, great news for our professionals who work there, <coughs> but great news for our residents. It, well, it, 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 yeah. it, it's been a long time coming. I can, I can remember being the councillor and the uh, mayor in the there lobbying for a new building. It, uh, and the council refused the mayor up. Certainly, the council's also the mayor up lobbied it. And the new car is now, it's good to see it's finally happening. Yeah, yeah, we we did uh, we did a lot of work the last couple of years trying to get the uh, because uh, well I guess when the green report came out and uh, Paffrey and Davis and then there was the the other the other uh, thing uh, uh, other accord. The health accord and uh, we spoke with them like you say but in the meantime uh, it was announced we were going to get a collaborative clinic that to me was music to my ears because you're going to have everybody in one building yeah. and uh, ideally you will have seven doctors that would be the ideal situation and so many nurse practitioners so many lpns and they've got telehealth they, they're doing telehealth right now at the building um, uh, that's going to be whatever's going to happen to it after they move. So you can you can go in and if you've got an ear infection and uh, the nurse practitioner in Grand Falls or St. John's can tell you she can see your ears and she can tell you, yes, you have an ear infection and I'm going to write you a prescription. So that's all going on now down at the building. Uh, but as, of course, they don't have seven doctors. They got I think they got about four right now, four or five. And but they've got a crew and they've got a lot of receptionists down there and they with all you know, with the LPNs and it, there's a lot of people down there. And the building, as we all know, uh, uh, Tom, you're right. When when we were lobbying too, when uh, when you were the mayor, and you know, it's it's amazing that they they were there that long. And I believe 
that was the not not favorable for the doctors to come here because they would talk to their buddies and when they would talk to them they would say well i wouldn't come here if i were you this this truly happens because i talk to them a lot you know and uh, i think this clinic is going to be a big thing for us to entice the doctors to come here oh, really there's, no, there's no question absolutely new innovation new facilities uh, new equipment will actually help with our retention but also with our recruitment so it's a great step for stephen though it's a lot in favor uh, uh, karen Item number four is a request to approve advertising 2024 Town of Stephenville tax structure. Be it resolved to approve a full page ad in the Newfoundland Wire to advertise the Town of Stephenville tax structure in the amount of $1,089 plus HST. I so move. Moved by Councilor Myra White, seconder. Second. Second Councilor Maurice Hines. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Just on that note, Mr. Mayor, I, I think it's a really good move that we start uh, using uh, other means of getting information out to taxpayers. And we are missing the part where we used to have a reporter here, but maybe uh, eventually we'll get around that and the citizens will get to hear and see what's happening at council. Yeah, the, the, our communications person, Mary Lee, is working with the, the new flying wire. Oh, okay. The, 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 to try to get more local content okay. in. in the, the yeah. Mary, Mary Lee is yeah. quite capable of yeah. ordering, ordering the information in. Yeah. So that's great. Mary, look forward to that because there's uh, lots of things happening in our community uh, that almost is hidden. And uh, citizens need to know what, what's happening. Yeah, having a communications director is going to really enhance our ability to communicate all the good things that are happening in Stephen Old Newfoundland. And uh, we hope they're all good. Yeah. Well, 99.9.9%. <laughs> .9 Let's go there. <laughs> okay, next item. We'll go ahead, Councillor mm -hmm. Myroy. Uh, number five, replacement of water line at 10 Burton Place. Be it resolved to approve replacement of a water line at on 10 Burton Place. I so move. Okay. To, to that, I just want to do inform council. You have in front of you estimates produced by our public works department. Yes. It wasn't clear to them exactly what what would be uh, the requirements. We went to the discussion in the uh, uh, meeting on the finance needs about whether we would just connect to the to the end or part way down down the drive down Burton or to the end and on discussion the recommendation we, we looked at three different scenarios the, the pricing is in front of you all three scenarios and these are estimates of course the actual costs will be determined because we would use our own forces to do the work but uh the recommendation i think that we should go with is the lowest price recommendation up to this point going down the road does not options for us with the exception of if there were problems in future for those other houses along Burton that would potentially are currently serviced from another lane from the, the street besides. So at this point, uh, you know, I think we just go directly to the uh, the end of that street, the, mm -hmm. the closest end, uh, which is the lowest cost solution there uh, in the proposal for you. That but the others are available for review. You can see there are three different prices. That 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 would be the estimate for twenty six thousand five hundred eighty eight. Correct. Yeah. So we're we're basically including a project for twenty six thousand five hundred eighty eight dollars. And it's uh, so we do have a motion. I'll just call for a second or first for protocol. One second. Second. Right. So just on discussion there to. Uh, as a council, uh, great work from our public works engineering office because we are responsible to ensure that people get proper blood at proper pleasure. We charge water tax as part of our taxation regime. And uh, so this is a good move. I'm sure the people that are having problems with water pressure will be really happy once we get this completed. <laughs> so on that note, some question. question. Uh, I noticed that one there that the town forces will be doing doing the work. What kind of time frame would that? How long that would tie up our our staff? Uh, I think it's oh. approximately a two week time frame to uh, to perform the work. Of course, planning and ordering of materials, that sort of thing. Uh, so hopefully they have something like that completed midsummer. I'm thinking based on the scheduling of other activities that they would have to do. Okay. But, 
you know, we're looking probably midsummer by the time it would be completed. But I do know many inquiries from that area that uh, had concerns over over time. So uh, this will hopefully address some of them. But we do have water issues out there today that haven't cropped up in yes. the same area. So that's right. Yeah. No, I, I just, uh, I'll just uh, consider that we had the capability. Yeah. You're saying we got the capability to do it ourselves and get it done in a timely manner. Yeah, so that's what that's what the important thing is. And, and that saves us a fair amount of money uh, on small projects that's manageable within uh, our public works and engineering office. It's uh, it's good money well spent uh, by our own forces to complete it rather than going out to tender. Yes, okay. Dan. Yeah, the, the, the 26 5 88 is basically the materials to, to do the job. Yeah. And then it's, then it's our own label on top of the 26. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Karen. Excuse me, Mayor Rose. Yes. Uh, just going back to motion four, I did have a uh, the motion brought forward by Councillor White and seconded by Councillor Schlemmings. I don't think that was for the advertising of the tax structure, but I don't believe we completed the vote on it to carry the motion. Okay, so we have a motion, a second. Mm -hmm. So we'll redo that motion. If, if you could. Okay. Councillor uh, White. Did you do the act structure one first again? Number Not four. a problem. Item number four, request to approve advertising 2024 Town of Stephenville tax structure. Be it resolved to approve a full page ad in the Newfoundland Wire to advertise the Town of Stephenville tax structure in the amount of $1,089 plus the HST. I so move. Moved by Councilor Myron White, seconder. Second, Councilor Maurice Hines. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carrot. Thank you. I think we just got a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Keep an eye on us there. Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. Councilor White. Uh, item number six a request to purchase rescue boats and equipment. Be it resolved to approve the purchase of a rescue boat and equipment for the Stephenville Fire Department in the amount of $4,800 plus the HST, I so move. Move second. by Councilor Myron White, seconder. Second. Second, Councilor O'Brien. Uh, oh, there is a, 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 yeah. not a, a bit of a correction here. 4800 is for the vessel. There, there also is equipment that has to be replaced, which are uh, suits, the, the water protective suits that they would wear which are now outdated, the ones that we have in uh, in hand, so they have to be replaced. So the amount is, is approximately $11,000 total. Although the, the suit has to be recorded just to, because of the delay that we had in this. So we don't have the exact figure until that, but I would so probably, probably have to bring that back to finance once we get the bulk of the suits. Uh, we, I, I think really you've approved it in, in principle already. So my recommendation is to proceed with it you know, it will not exceed, uh, I, I, I would say, $12,000. So it'll be up to $12,000. Okay. Yeah. That's you should approve. Yes. So to the full up. Newly noted. So the, 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 as the, the manager said, you mean the suits or something like the bunker gear? You mean the, the day you purchase them is the, in your receipts, you, 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 you know when they're going to expire because that's their data. So the suits need to be changed. The, the, the fire department's done water rescues in, in the past, but you mean to get there, they get to put suits on and they have to swim out to the, 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 the victim as their person is. The, the, this boat, it comes in a bag and it only weighs about 70 pounds and it's in the compartment on the truck. The, the, within two minutes of taking it out of the truck, the boat is inflated because they use the same air tanks as they wear, wear on their back. So rather than our firefighters swimming out to someone, now they can use this boat because, I mean, as we all know, if, if somebody's drowning or in water, if you get close to them, the first thing they grab is, is you. And the, the, the boat makes it much safer, for, not only for our firefighters, but also the person or persons that they're rescuing. So, I mean, it, it is a good investment. I just to add to uh, what Councilor O'Brien says, I uh, really appreciate uh, Chief uh, Steve Morris and uh, Firefighter Andrew Pilkey for coming in and uh, discussing and explaining the equipment, which is one reason why we put on a hold because we didn't have enough information. So that was really good and we really appreciate what they had done. So, so I wait. call for question right. uh, yeah, a question. while back only because um, I guess that was the finance committee that the presentation was done with. 
and not the planning committee. And uh, I did have some questions and some concerns that I hope somebody can answer. And one was statistically, uh, how many times have we been called to a water rescue? Um, and again, I voiced my concern. We've got a very active search and rescue group here um, who can be called upon in the event that uh, something <laughs> would be not be better spent investing that money in our search and rescue group who could use it on a much broader scale and would also um, if provide it, support. If, if you may, or, or uh, yes. uh, maybe Bill can answer that. To, to respond to that. And so we received a presentation from the fire department. We've also had uh, information from search and rescue generally. A search and rescue uh, calling may take, you know, upwards of a half hour, completely an hour or more for their response. So we're talking about emergency response immediately using this this equipment. Uh, I know the organization, uh, Town Steeple, has supported search and rescue with equipment in the past as well. That equipment is readily available for use in the area. Uh, however, normally call out of uh, search and rescue is done through the RCMP. There's a protocol and, and it's, it, its delay is an issue that would potentially impact life safety for uh, victims of an accident or someone who went into the cold water. Yep. So on that basis, uh, with the explanation from the fire department, this is a necessary piece of equipment that improves our opportunity. So it's not just people in our in our suits. We do have the suits. The statistics were um, provided to me. There were less than 10, but there were numerous instances Nine. over the last 10 years where they had to respond immediately to uh, water rescue type activities on, on behalf of, say, an accident victim. So and this is the worst time of year for that, of course, with the uh, partial ice that and early in the uh, early in the fall when the ice starts to, to settle over. It. So, uh, so the scope of <clears throat> practice for firefighters has certainly changed then in terms of, because they're being called out to every motor vehicle accident mm -hmm. and those kinds of yes. things as yeah, well. Yeah. So I can understand, you know, if if we've if we have responded and I don't I'm not uh, it's not that I don't support the fire department, but conceivably, if we had no rescues and we were looking to spend 11,000, we could say, well, we better get geared up for uh, alien landings too, because that could happen and we got to be the first ones to rescue and on and on. Now that's an extreme example, but you, you understand what I'm saying. And for me, I couldn't think of uh, any times where there was there was water rescue, but if there is, then uh, you know well, there are. Okay, and they have been documented, and yeah, we yeah, yeah. and you, you and, and and you're right, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor. You mean the, the one, one time our fire department just responded to fires, but I mean over the years the service has grown. The uh, the call to pretty much every accident that's in town, the call to the medical calls and the water the rescue type thing. And the, the way the system works, I mean, 911 call comes in. A lot of times the person actually making the call is a bit panicky and, and, and stuff, and, and all the correct information is not relayed. And their fire department, they're normally the first ones on the scene. So when it involves water, the, uh, if they have to go through the system, through the RCMP, to search and rescue, it, it's a delay there, like the manager said. And then in all likelihood, uh, they're being called out for recovery rather than a rescue. So uh, 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 that's, that delay is a big, big part of that. So in light of that as well, a little bit outside of this, but not, uh, because I was involved with the, um, the um, response group in Bay St. George, the uh, psychological first aid kind of uh, critical incident debriefing and so on. Um, I know that um, RCMP and firefighting services do some debriefing and uh, but I think in light of the fact that the scope has broadened so much uh, I think firefighters are seeing a lot more traumatic incidents mm -hmm. uh, you know if if you you could have fought fires for your full career and, and I'm not seeing the death or whatever but if you're responding to all these accidents you're seeing a lot of trauma and so I think it would be worthwhile uh, as a council in terms of policy stuff to make sure 
that we are really focused on incident stress debriefing after every incident that the training be made available to people and that we continue to follow up on that so that uh, we're giving people the best possible chance of long careers without uh, long term you know, incidents, right? Yeah, I, I, I know that that was inflation in years gone by and I would think it's probably still it still is sometimes it's uh, you know things um, are updated and and you tend to I know sometimes it's easy if, if you haven't had any incidents in a while to kind of get a little lax on, <laughs> on what you're doing and so on right so I'll for the vote too I just want to say that our full-time uh, fire department is backed up by our auxiliary department but it's also backed up by ground search and rescue who plays a critical role in the region. Um, we have supported them. We always will support them. I'm sure of that uh, as uh, we get requests coming in. But the scope changing a little bit and the higher skill and the higher training our staff are gives them the ability to uh, save lives. And uh, increasing their toolkit is critical. So. Our firefighters are also now trained by the Marine Institute through the Diamond Group Airport for crash fire training. You know, 20 years ago, that didn't happen, or 30 years ago, because the airport had their own fire department. So they have enhanced training. So, but we need to support them and our ground search and rescue, which is critical to save our lives in our region. So, on that note, all in favor. Carrie. OK, do we have anything late for finance? Um, I'm sorry, I, I guess I should have interjected. Um, on this request for these rescue boats and equipment, uh, we said that the $4,800 was what would be a lot more than that because yeah, we had to. Uh, so yeah. what I'd like uh, um, I'd like to say is either we change the amount or we remove something from this particular request to match up for the 4800 not to exceed the amount of twelve thousand dollars. Not to exceed that. Mm. Yeah. No, yeah. my my paper. You want to change? No, I'm, I'm going to Okay, you already change that. Change that. Change it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So your motion then would read uh, instead of three hundred plus HST, it would be not to exceed the amount of twelve thousand dollars plus HST. So if you want to uh, reword that, I'll call for the seconder. And uh, I would prefer we do. Okay, so let's redo it. Uh, be resolved to approve the purchase of rescue boats and equipment for the Stephenville Fire Department in the amount of four thousand eight hundred dollars plus HST, yeah. but not yeah, but not to exceed the twelve thousand dollar limit. Four thousand plus HST. Plus HST. Yeah. Uh, I so move. Second, uh, Council Mayor White. Seconder. Second. Second, Council Aldine. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that it for finance. That is it for finance. Uh, like from management. <coughs> no, uh, no, I was just saying in case you needed some extra clarification. Appreciate it, Kaiser. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to our uh, chair of planning and traffic, Councillor Lori over for five point two. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, welcome, everybody listening <laughs> and uh, listening online as well. Uh, the Planning and Traffic Committee met on April the 8th, uh, 2024, and the following items were recommended for council approval. Uh, number uh, letter A, it's a spring cleanup, be it resolved to approve spring cleanup period from April 22nd to May 10th, 2024. Drop off at the Public Works Depart Depot would be from April 22nd to May 4th, followed by curbside collection May 6th to May 10th. 2024. I so moved. Move by Councilor Laurie Edward, seconder. Second. Second, Councilor Myra White. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Aye. Uh, what I was going to say there is uh, that's a good time to, to do the, the cleanup. And uh, as you know, we do get a lot of stuff. Sometimes we have to uh, even expand it because of all the material that's out. And uh, our beautification. The, uh, the, the um, employees from the dome will be starting soon 
uh, because they're taking the ice off. I think it's Saturday, uh, Sunday night, so they'll be starting up the um, the clearing. You know, uh, this, all the greens that they have to mow and all that. There's a lot of greenery that has you know that got to be mowed, and they do a really good job. So, and we're looking at the meeting. I've been meeting hopefully next week, Mr. Mayor, if you're around. Uh, yeah. I'll be there because uh, I have some new members now uh, on the committee, so I, I'll be talking about that later on. OK, OK, just uh, a point of note for the public. So the, the website will have the details on there. <clears throat> there is a hope that we can establish a, um, a longer term schedule for this kind of activity to be posted on the website ahead of time. So. Once council reviews the, the plan for the future, we'll we'll be able to post that. Plus, the uh, the rules and limitations associated with the the the, uh, the waste uh, pickup and that uh, merrily is done up uh, documents, which will also be circulates on all public media, uh, you know, social media, what have you, so that it identifies exactly. We get a lot of questions. People call up: Is this allowed? Is that not allowed? Whatever. Yeah. So those details will be also posted uh, for the public's information. Also, uh, encourage the public to recognize that the uh, curbside collection from May 6th to May 10th. So uh, I know some people have to put it out a little earlier because you got help moving it out there or whatever. But we kind of discourage people from putting it out too early because it becomes quite an eyesore for a long period of time. So hopefully uh, people will put it out closer to the pickup time and, uh, you know, we're not left with, because we all know what happens. You put out a pile and then somebody sees something that's valuable to them and they push through and grab theirs and over a week or so it's spread out all over the it's road true. and so on, right? And the other thing is, um, I would encourage groups out there if they want to uh, do some cleanup because we pay. What are we paying for a bag now? Is it a dollar? I think we may have to look at cleaning it up because it was, uh, yeah, it was two dollars for yeah. sure. It may have to look at what? So I was going to bring it up under a new business. Yeah. Maybe seeing we're into the discussion. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd like for management and our communication team, along with our recreation, because to me, picking up garbage at recreation is getting out there, get a bit of exercise and stuff like that. But we need to That's have a stretch. Okay. Well, Mayor. But we need to get a, a really good communication plan out there to reach out to all the schools, all the community groups. We have to get our town cleaned up. We have a dirty town. Yes. And I think it's conducive also that our public works in our uh, uh, beautification committee. It's ongoing, ongoing, but it's everybody's duty to clean up your town. Um, I spent a lot of time in the wilderness. I take out people's garbage that they leave in the wilderness, and it's everybody's responsibility. But I think we need a really good concerted effort and we can get management and communications to reach out to the air cadets and the yeah. lines and all the community groups. I think we need to increase the uh, bag limit yeah. or the cost per bag to encourage uh, that for their community groups. But we need to get them out and we need to time it during these, this two weeks period. And obviously, you always go with alternate dates because you want to do it on a nice day. Yes, you do. Not a windy, rainy day. So maybe we can get management working on that. A question, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in the past, the Nota Town had supplied uh, garbage bags and, and tools to pick up. Would they be doing that again? And, and gloves? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's okay, good. We've been doing that every year. Okay, excellent. So, did we vote on this? <coughs> then Friday? our cleanup day will send. So, uh, did we vote? Yes. Did we vote? No, we didn't. Uh, no. Yeah. No, we discussed we did, it. We did have a motion and a secondary. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Do it. Carry. Okay, sir. What's the budget for beautification supposed to come from? What's the budget for beautification supposed to come from? Their finance? It will be uh, uh, for the next meeting. Next week. Yeah, yeah. because um, it was a little bit late and I didn't want to put it in too late. Mm, okay. Okay. Um, uh, excuse me, uh, this item coming up, I'm in conflict, business related. You know what I recognize that Councillor Roberts had. Wait over here. Let me just push your chair no. back. No, no, to eat, to, no, not anymore. 
Oh, you can't roll. No, no you can't roll away. <laughs> that's the problem. Sometimes you walk, sometimes you're sitting in the public gallery. Right? You got to get exercise. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, the, the last item, imagine only two items on planning. Wow. Unless there's some late ones. 41 Main Street, Wigma. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation. Uh, is it Wig Wig Wigma? Auto parts and equipment. Be resolved to issue a permit to construct co concrete pad for storage of industrial gases and a concrete ramp to doors in accordance with all town regulations. I so move. Move by Council Lori Edwards. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I, this is all there is for planning, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Councillor Rob, would you be returned to the table? Okay. Uh, 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 Mr. Mayor, oh, uh, Deputy Mayor, you go first. Welcome to all of that. We are uh, or at the uh, finance Thanks. meeting. There was, there was a miscommunication and it didn't get added to the okay. finance agenda, so it will be dealt with okay. on the next uh, finance agenda. Okay. Yeah. OK, so nothing late for planning. No, nope. just Mr. Mayor, uh, just a little point that was brought to me by uh, several people. OK, and it uh, concerns the uh, three traffic lights that we have in town. OK, OK, well, uh, let's just leave that for uh, new business. Cause OK, I, uh, so item number six, bylaws and regulations, nothing there for today. OK, so uh, unfinished, any unfinished business? I guess on, on, on this is Mayor, the, the, at a previous public meeting, I the, the, asked a question regarding the $10 million that was announced the, the, when the, the, the announcement was made in the fall of 21 regarding the airport and the, the, how the $10 million fell off the table. The, since I asked that question at a public meeting, and, and, I, and I asked it because people were asking me about it and they continue to ask me about it. Uh, I spoke to a couple of board members and they basically pointed the, the, the towards town hall to uh, drop in the $10 million requirement. So, you I mean, can we get someone from the airport board in to clarify this no, once and for all so the question will go away? Well, a couple of items here for uh, procedure. Uh, the airport corporation has dissolved. But the members are still in hell. What's that? But the members are still in hell. But I don't know if they have the legal authority to speak on behalf of a corporation that doesn't exist legally. But they, we, can, we can request and they can. You can request maybe the former chair, Willie McNeil, uh, just for clarity. And I think I've explained this several times today is that uh, $10 million was a public endorsement by the Stephen Town Council to accept an MOU that over time $10 million will be spent towards fire protection equipment. And we agreed to that. That was a decision of council. That's it. It wasn't part of the sales agreement. So I don't know how much clearer but, I can state it. But I, uh, on this though, the way that it's coming through now, uh, I think the way we resolve it is to let's request the information from the, the board I can get the prior minute that where that was yes. endorsed by council, yeah. and then we can follow up on it and appropriately bring it back to council as an item. Council yes, time, yeah. if that's if that's that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, that motion it, it, need, it, need, it needs to be clarified. Yeah, you mean so you mean the, the, there's still board members of second count. So you mean if we contacted the board members and see how many of them we can get in. To and get so clarified. Uh, just so I and you know just. Why don't I take a few more people out? Um, <laughs> OK, so it's it's done. It was discussed. It went to a meeting. It was voted on. It was agreed upon and all that, right? So what does going backwards do? If somebody, if people really want to know that, should they not go and talk to the somebody themselves? Like why? Because it's not the whole community that's asking this question. It's two or three, or you can probably say 10 or 12. I don't know, but why do we keep going back to things that are going to become controversial issues again when they've already been made, the decision's been made? So why do we revisit again? 
It, 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 it's not going to become a controversial again. Yes, it, it is. It, bringing it right back to it, the... Yes, it, it continues to be controversial with the number of people that, that well, are I asking me. Get, and, and, and no one's and, asked and, me, and I've been here for a while, too. Well, I don't get people they, coming up and asking me I, I don't time. Know, I don't know why they're asking you, but yeah. they are asking they're not me. Asking and, for, and, and they've asked some, some of the board yeah. members, they're and, for a and, and, the answer, and the answer that they're getting is, is that it was driven from town hall. So I'd like to... I mean, Get some board members in there, get it clarified, so people will stop asking the question. And but you know what? There will yeah. just be a different way to ask it. So, well, so I, I, it's not going to be any clearer than what's been told. Yeah. Well, that it was agreed upon that, that would, it will come in over time in the form of um, um, improvements to the fire services. Yes, that's what it was for. Now, people at that time had the misperception that they were supposed to give us $10 million to put in the bank account. Well, that's and that's not what it was. Yes, right. And that's where it started to move. It was always about providing support to the fire hall. Initially, we thought maybe we were going to have to do a build of a new fire hall or or whatever. But I, I, I don't know. I just fail to see why we keep going back to it. Um, over and over. I mean, I, I, I said this before, and I'll, I'll say it again. The, the $10 million was, was in the announcement in, in the fall of 2021. And yes, it, it was $10 million going to go towards the uh, uh, building of a fire uh, hall at that yeah, time. The, the, I, I found that strange at the time because, I mean, if I buy your house, I don't get to tell you what to spend your money on. So, I mean, but anyway, let's get somebody in, let's get it clarified. So the question goes well, away. I, I believe the CAO had a, had a suggestion, and I think we follow through with that, and 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 then that will be it. I, I think we follow through on that. Well, I agree, with you, Councillor Heinz, but again, I agree with Susan because why would you invite in a non-existent board? They're not. They don't exist. They're not. They're, they're former board members, and also the thing is. Uh, we don't have anything to do with the airport. We we don't know. We, they don't. Why why would we go to a private company and ask them what's going on? That that's not the thing. I get calls lots of time. Oh Laura, what's going on with the airport? We're going to get any flights. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And what I say to them, now you know what? If you want to know the answer to that, you're going to have to call the manager of the Diamond Seville Airport, or you're going to have to call Carl Diamond yourself. Because that's the only ones can give them information and that knows the information. Yeah. The non-existent board don't know what's going on now. They're, they're not even, yeah. you know. And, and my frustration, if I sound frustrated, is because I was here through all the negotiations. It wasn't easy. We worked things through. We put them to bed through a vote. And what we keep doing is going back to them. So, like, something happened in uh, 2016 when I was elected there. Someone asked me something. So probably we should revisit that too. I'll probably come back with a list of things that people are asking me that we need to go back. But is a vote of council, when a vote of council goes through, it's through. It's true. Yeah. And We're remember, not change it. And, uh, just like to add to that, Deputy Mayor, so we can move on to the next items on our list because we got some so, very distinguished people here today. But I will clearly say that the terms of the sale of the airport agreement was supported by this council, but it was done through two legal teams with two private entities. We had no say other than given support for the sale of the airport. We were tired of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars given to an airport that was in bankruptcy protection. It's no longer in bankruptcy. Number two, the MOU that we agreed to that would determine $10 million over time to be spent towards fire protection equipment and buildings was clearly just an MOU. It wasn't binding. We knew that. We were informed by our legal counsel and it went to the table. Unanimously, it was supported by counsel. So if anybody wants to see what that is, just go to the minutes of the meeting, call management. But it's not, remember, once counsel makes a decision, it is a decision. We don't bring it back to the table. Uh, I got a comment. I, 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 Excuse I, me, I'm speaking. Um, what I'm getting from people is not what you're getting from people. People that know me come up and said, come on, let's move this town. Let's get this going. Let's start uniting and let the rest of 
Newfoundland and Canada know that we're we're coming together. We're going to gel together. We're going to grow this town. And that's all I've been getting. I don't know why I, I'm getting some of that too. Be going backwards because nobody's saying that to me. They got good news yesterday and uh, we we need to do this. We need to put a lot of this stuff because it's just stuff and words to get like put it aside. Let's come together as a group and let's build this town like we want it to grow. Let's let's open up our eyes and let's say we got a vision for this place and we're going to do it together, not parts. I don't want to see parts. I want us together making good sound decisions and we got good people sitting at this table. Come on, let's do it. I, that's all I'm going to say because I want positivity here. I don't want no more negative negativity. I have had it up to here with that. I'm sorry, but that's the way I. Yeah. So I, not, I mean, I, mean I, I, I agree with what you say, but I mean, I, I've got to take exception to what the mayor said. That once council makes a decision, that's it. You mean the, uh, you only got to go back over the last uh, number of months when council revisited stuff and changed their decisions. I mean, that's a procedural, I mean, that's, yeah, that's but that's that's procedural thing. That's and when about. we're being given information and we move on that information and then afterwards we're told by the same people that, oops, that's not the way you should have done it. You should have done it a different way. We bring it back to the table. It's not because we've decided to change position uh, our position on things. It's a those are procedural issue that we were very clear about. Uh, but but this, so anyway, let's, let, let's on, let's on on the offer to uh, revisit again with respect to everybody here and the concerns. It's a matter of providing the definitive information in a package that you guys can all review. And hopefully then the facts will be on the table. They're available for public review and that should settle the matter uh, as I understand it at this stage. So let's just put some of the maps in. Maybe, got, got, maybe they won't come in. And then now we got to clear up by our CAO. Uh, let's hope they don't have to come to the table again. But anyways, uh, so any other unfinished business before I turn it into new business? New business, Council Morris Science. Okay. Mine is not as exciting. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, we have three uh, traffic lights in town, and they are uh, a number of people have, have called and emailed, and I think uh, CEO has also received some. There's a big discrepancy on the wait time. Uh, all three traffic lights, uh, the green time goes between 26 seconds and 28 seconds that the traffic is moving. Uh, uh, between uh, North, uh, between Carolina and Minnesota, the wait time, okay, is 32 seconds. Not bad. Uh, on Maine and uh, Queen, it is uh, approximately 50 seconds okay, of wait time. Did you say 50 or 50? 50. 50, 50. 50 seconds, give or take plus or minus a second. And Prince Rupert uh, and Queen, though, is uh, one minute, 15 seconds. Uh, so what we've found, I went down and watched the traffic and did the timing, is that people are coming out, taking a different exit, going down towards Crown and going all the other ones and and in all the expense we had to put it there and not really using it. So yeah. yeah, so so what they've been asking is that is there an ability to adjust the stop time there? OK, uh, that even if you brought it back to 50 seconds or 55 seconds to be in line with the other ones. So uh, and Good. So <clears throat> that's a good point. We can uh, take all the planning. Yes. Uh, I do know uh, we had been briefed previously on, depending on the, the span of an intersection, depending on the amount of traffic flow at intersections, that they are they can all not. Yep. It's going to be adjusted. So let's let planning and engineering. And, and they're uh, working on it as we speak. Also, yes. Yes. Can we uh, turn it over uh, to our. Uh, yep. On the. On the uh, uh, and the truck timing of traffic lights, what are the accessibility plans going forward is to improve accessibility for these uh, crossings uh, using what's called accessible pedestrian signal technology, APS technology. So as part of that process, we must time the crossings appropriately for the technology that we use. So that's going to be part of the accessibility. Good point. Yeah, where that intersection is so wide down there, it, yeah, you it, it, it's longer than walking the cross. Yes, that's right. right. So let's let management yep. come back and get okay. some rationale, but okay. good, very good point. Okay. I know people are impatient these days. <laughs> <Okay. clears throat>
OK, Councillor Deputy Mayor, sorry, uh, Susan. Bell. Um, I just want to update um, Council. I attended the uh, UMC meetings, which is the urban municipalities uh, committee meetings on the weekend in Pasadena. And uh, I must say, I thought they were really excellent, very informative. We had some uh, Pasadena is doing some really neat things, I think uh, innovative and, and different. Um, they've taken, I guess they've taken a few things into their own hands and they're trying to solve some of their problems without waiting. But uh, so there's, you know, kudos to them. Um, it was a pretty full agenda. Um, but interestingly enough, but not surprisingly, I'm sure to anybody who's been around the table at all, a, a large portion of the meetings were focused on um, certificate of conducts, but also on um, really the theme of it was uh, how to put the civil back in civics. That was the theme of the, uh, the session that we did. <coughs> and so there was some really interesting and very good discussion on uh, how how uh, civil society is changing and how really um, you know we can wish that it wasn't, but the reality is we're going to have to figure out how to how to live within that. Uh, there was, you know, we talked about the fact that one time everybody in school learned civics and so on, and and, and uh, the presenter brought up the fact, and I know this, I've experienced this myself to, in talking to college students who do not know the difference between the prime minister, the premier, the mayor. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, so you know, people aren't learning any of the uh, protocols or. Uh, um, so the civic culture, I guess, is changing very much as well. But um, some of the discussion as well around the um, social platforms and social media platforms. And uh, there was a great book referred to a number of times and I've since bought the book and, and uh, I'll sh when I finish reading it, you're all welcome to to have a read. But it's uh, it's called Save Your City. And it's about incivility in uh, public discourse. So it's uh, so there was a real focus on that. And what they talked about is how the social contract has declined. We've become a much more individual society, but also how people aren't. Uh, I guess the platform is there for people who can't regulate emotion. Uh, there's no stop time. One time if you were upset with something, you had to write a letter. Well, in that time that you wrote the letter or whatever, you had time to kind of process, but now it's immediate. And so a lot of uh, what hits is very um, uncivil. On, on and uh, but uh, the discussion from there went to what is the impact in terms of our next election, which is 2025, I think. And the big piece of that was how are we going to encourage people to volunteer and run at a time when uh, it can be so damaging for people um, you know, to run? So there were some really good discussions and those discussions are going to continue at the symposium. So I would encourage anybody who's able to go to that to, uh, to attend it. Where is it this year? Uh, it was supposed to be in Cornerbrook, but because of uh, an issue in Cornerbrook that took some of the hotels out, it's in Gander, and it'll be in Cornerbrook now next year, right? In Gander, what's the date, Susan? May 2nd to the 4th. May 2nd to the 4th. 2nd, yeah, in Gander. And uh, again, we went over MNL's report. Um, especially they've added a pillar to their plan, which is around addressing housing insecurity. So again, that seems to be everybody is trying to uh, put some focus there, right? Um, they had other concerns, of course, uh, other municipal concerns that were expressed and we'll probably face those too. And that was around uh, when some of this um, when some of the jobs hit, for example, with world energy and stuff, how do you hold on to staff uh, when you know other people are coming along 
that uh, or maybe look and think make things look good. So looking at ways in which to do that. Um, and other than that, it was uh, some discussion around what new what can some of the newer roles, additional roles that regional service boards can play. Right now, ours, for example, is really only about waste management, but there's a lot of um, other things that service boards can do that they're going to take back and and look at. And then other than that, we went over some of the budget highlights. Uh, again, which will uh, there was an increase in the base funding for municipal operating grants and so on. Uh, largely because of the lobby work of of uh, in, uh, I guess uh, what they were doing was encouraging uh, municipalities to continue to come forward to the AGMs and so on with good resolutions because there's proof there that the resolutions that came forward were heard and answered in the uh, in the budget so um, so I guess for for us, um, it was a really good meeting and a great opportunity to share with other people from larger municipalities for sure. But the other piece is that MNL is doing some great advocacy work, and uh, I think you know we we continue to support their work as they continue to support ours. So, so uh, Deputy Mayor Fowler, did they? Uh spend much time discussing the code of conduct. They did, and uh, there were there were a number of um, uh, many of the people there had um, examples um, to share of how the code of conduct was hampering the work of uh, the councils and uh, slowing down the work uh, of councils. And um, there was some discussion about some of the changes that are being made and a lot of discussion about um, the whether or not the code of conduct should be something that can be used by the public because uh, it was it was I got it here somewhere. It was designed to look at and protect people from harassment Four types uh, public to council not council to public, public to council, council to council, public to staff, and council to staff. Um, what most people were finding is that it was be being kind of weaponized by uh, public people often for invalid reasons. So I think that's that's going to be looked at as is it did it provide what it was designed to do? And the discussion seems to suggest no. And there is, you know, they are in the process of revamp that. Good, good to hear. OK, I have okay. something to um, say. Uh, you notice that I'm wearing my orange shirt today. I got a bit of orange look. <laughs> and, uh, every child matters. <laughs> and uh, the lady actually who designed the shirts and came up with the idea, her name is Phyllis uh, Webstead. Webstead. And she's going to be at the Lions Club tonight from six to eight to tell her story and wear the orange shirt. So we Oh, I'm sorry. I keep saying that's tonight. It's Friday night. Uh, six to eight tomorrow night right. at the Lions Club. Yeah, she's uh, changed uh, and made an impression in Canada. She's to be admired and uh, supported in her efforts. Uh, I just like to maybe uh, one new business. It was a big news story uh, for Steveville yesterday with the green light from government on a multi-billion dollar green energy project for Steveville and region. Um, this is global in nature. And I'll go back to when the German Chancellor and the Prime Minister, uh, the Deputy Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, and the Deputy Prime Minister, political elite from across the country, uh, 25 of Germany's top CEOs were in Stephenville. Uh, that's Siemens, Volkswagen, Mercedes-Benz, Bayer. The collected capital just that was on that flight with the German Chancellor, the companies they represented was in the trillions of dollars. This project has the green light. One more little step is final investment decision. That's part of a mega project, multi-billion dollar project of this scale. But 
the support and the urgency of creating green ammonia for a G7 nation. Canada has stepped up to the plate to support Germany, one of our allies. Our goal is in 20, late 2020 or early 2026, okay, I got that right, that we would be shipping ammonia from the port of Stephenville to Hamburg. 25 years ago, we used to ship newsprint from Abitibi Price to Hamburg. So you could see how technology is changing. The green energy is about decarbonizing the planet. The planet is heating up. As we well know, some of the fires in British Columbia last year has still not gotten out. We're still smoldering. And we're about ready to hit another dry season. So it just goes to show that the scientists are not wrong when they say the planet is warming up. But for this community, it will be the third economic boom in the history of Stephenville. I would say that this will probably supersede the building of the Labrador Line Board Mill because of the scale and the scope. It's being touted that it could be the single largest private investment in the history of Atlantic Canada. Remember, there's been big projects in Halifax and St. John. A lot of them were federal defense budget projects. This is global in scale. It has global investment. Companies such as SK Ecoplan, 20% <coughs> equity state with World Energy. I believe they're almost the biggest Samsung. So this is big companies. So it's great. This is an opportunity to keep Newfoundlanders home, to bring Newfoundlanders home and their families. And I truly believe that getting the workers, the professionals that's going to do the work will not be a problem because the work camp will be in, most work camps are in very isolated areas, like Boise's Bay. Challenging when you get off your two week shift and you can't get over there for another five days because of weather and so forth. But when a Newfoundlander knows that you're in Steamville in a work camp and you're from Lewisport or uh, Bay Bulls or St. Anthony or Deer Lake and you're working here, you're driving home. And that means a lot for a young family. So this is an opportunity to get our town ready and remember with our management team and with the policy direction of council, we're ensuring that we don't leave anybody behind. We don't want to grow so rapidly that we don't look at the needs of our seniors, people with uh, accessibility issues, our children, our environment. We have to be focused on all the needs of our community and got to be in step with the growth. So I got to give a lot of credit to Mr. John Risley, Mr. Gene Jabolas, Mr. Brendan Pata, the three main <clears throat> investors and the brain trust of World Energy GH2. It was a big day yesterday, but I feel it even yesterday and today, wherever you go, the excitement, everybody's got a little spring in their step. Remember, when we lost Abitibi Price, that had a big impact on this town. We lost a little bit of population. And what? This is so great. This is a green industry. This is an industry that has zero emissions. It's not like an oil refinery is coming into Stephen Muller, Fort Port, or Cogno. It's not as if it's a nuclear power plant. This is a pr project with hydrogen and wind that's harnessing natural resources that has zero emissions. This is good for Newfoundland. This is good for our country. This is good for our planet. Great for Steve. And our wind power is? Pardon? Our wind power is? Is. Continue. Yeah, our wind, thank you very much. We, <laughs> uh, somebody I was speaking at a uh, Memorial University Navigate uh, luncheon last night to a bunch of entrepreneurs. They said, why Stephenville? I said, there's a lot of reasons, a lot of checkboxes. We have airports and ports of international scale and one of the best weather records east of Montreal and project management weather is a high mitigation issue. But in steam on good weather, we've got good soil structures. Our adjacency to Europe 
the northeastern seaboard, South America, and the Northwest Passage. We are close. We are the closest ice free port to the Northwest Passage. The Northwest Passage, the tonnage coming through the Northwest Passage every year is growing because it's opening up by days and days and days because of global warming. And they're critical. The big thing too, we are Canadians. We're one of the best countries in the world. And it's easy to attract investment when you have stable government. This is a big geopolitical. You had to go into the Ukraine or Russia right now, let's say. Just saying. From big investment portfolio. But at the end of the day, you can put all those check boxes there and they were critical in selecting Steamboat. But we have the best wind corridor in North America, possibly the world. The Danes hold the portals and the assays and all the data for the planet. And remember, the companies that have the best win will get a better return and a faster return on investment. And we have investment coming from the East, from Europe, from all over. Stephenville is truly a global asset. And we, as an indigenous community and as an indigenous mayor, we have great indigenous representation today for something that's going to follow. We are very proud that we're playing a role to help heal this planet. And I think that's critical. And on that note, you, would you like to explain something about the boards that you have? Well, on the board? we're about ready to do that. So <laughs> is there anything else in, because we do have a presentation, yes. uh, Councillor O'Brien. Yeah, we uh, spoke earlier about cleanup week and, and that and, and the different groups and that. Uh, one group uh, that comes uh, to mind is the BIA, the Business Improvement Association downtown. I mean, the, uh, that's the business in the BIA area to pay an extra mill a year on their uh, uh, property tax uh, to fund projects and to keep Main Street clean in the summer. So you mean the, uh, each summer they hire a couple of students which keeps the, the sidewalks and everything clean down there. Uh, uh, they hang the, the pot flower plants from the, the, the lakes on Main Street, which was a BIA project when they were all installed. So you I mean, the, uh, we should send a big thank you to the BIA uh, in, in that regard. Uh, Something else I had on the list was to ask, the, uh, when was the last time council met with the health authority regarding how many doctors in town? The health authority, my God, but Tom, we've been the trying to get- court, uh, They did their uh, presentations around the province. We were selected. Yeah. That's, I would say that's nine months ago. Uh, yeah, but, but, yeah, but, but we did but, have- but, The health court has been accepted now by the government. Yeah, yeah but we did meet with the, uh, as often as we get a meeting with them. Uh, yes. This was, this was, I was there as a foundation member, but I put forth some questions on how couple care. of those anyway. went to go. We met with. Yeah, but uh, we went to the health care, the board. All the members of the board came here a day's in. Mm -hmm. And I went down and uh, the chair of uh, our foundation went down as well. And people from all over, but the, the vast majority of people that were there were Eastern Health board members. And we only have. Uh, we did have a representative on the former board, uh, Marie Brennan Downey from Stephen Crossing, and we had Mark Mills. So the Eastern Health Board, Care Board, the, mass, the most, the majority of the people are from the Eastern End because you've got lawyers, you've got doctors, you've got people like that that are involved. And Central, there's Central and Eastern, and then there's Western, and then you go on to Grenfell and so on and so on. So we met with all the board members and uh, Dave Diamond is the head guy now for uh, Eastern Health and he's retiring. So there's a new person involved, Bob, Robert, I uh, got his name in my file home somewhere. But anyway, Robert's his first name. So we met with all of them and I questioned different things and uh, didn't get answers that I was looking for. But I did have a brief moment with Tara Freak, the CAO of Western Health. And, and I specifically spoke to her about the loss of our, one of our anesthesiologists. And he was supposed to be finishing up the end of March. Now he put his resignation in 1st of January. And it's only now, it's, it's effective the end of March. And I, don't, I, I can't speak to all the details because I can't give my sources, but he wasn't pleased with what was happening. 
and uh, he wasn't getting the support he should have got. Um, the other thing is, she said to me that day, she said, oh, she said, well, we're trying to work through some things with him now. So I don't know what happened after that. Now, we did request to, them to meet with us the last couple of months, but we never did get a date from them. So we have to. So we need to follow, just, yeah, uh, follow up to that, uh, <clears throat> Councillor O'Brien, too. Um, it may be time to ask again and say, OK, the green light now, we're about to get into construction and all those other things here which are going to add uh, to the need for uh, especially emergency care but also for a, a bunch of people coming again uh, without doctors and so on so I think we're going to have to stay on this uh, at, interestingly at the meetings Gander happily talked about how you know when they lost their obstetrics yeah. here for a, a matter of a couple of days and then they you know, mounted this big campaign and got it back. And oh, how nice they had their first baby born. And I'm thinking, OK, what's going on there? And where's our yeah. stuff, right? So um, I think now is the time for us to really start to lobby. If, if we're looking at growth, we're going to have to have growth in terms of our health care as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. We should, we should refresh, refresh that request. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, before I finish on the board, uh, Councillor O'Brien, uh, our representative on, on the board now is um, uh, Mr. Walters out of uh, Hornerbrook. Now he was on the board before. What in heck is uh, thinking about trying to think of his first name now? I know, I know him and, and his wife. Walters. Don? What? Is it Don? Mr. Walters? No. What the heck's his name? I'll think about it in a minute. Hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, it, so really and truly, uh, he, he's for all of us. Like we don't have a Stephenville person anymore. Now he's been on the board for several years prior too, right? Yeah. But. Uh, the problem I got is uh, we've got now, well, the good news is, before I keep quiet, <laughs> is all the base housing that the eight, eight apartments, maybe more, but eight I know of, finally got renovated because it wasn't fit for these people. When they come here, see, the deal with, with all we've always been is when a doctor moves here, they go into a base housing until they were going to find a place to rent or whatever, that's supposed to be the deal. Mm -hmm. But they end up staying there for sometimes as long as they're here. In the meantime, there was so much needed to be done to those inside those buildings. And the local state. And heating and everything else. So anyway, all eight have been done. They're all done. So that bodes really well. I mean, I really appreciate what they've done there, but it took a long time and, and you know. So um, those things are, that's good because I know, uh, young students that have come out here to to get some training and they one student I think even even left and went back because she wouldn't want to stay didn't want to stay in the place because it was it was it was bad right so that's going on so there's a lot of things going on like that but we have to keep focused and tell them that we need obstetrics back down the road because we got a young woman now that's ready to come here from Stephenville her husband so that are ready to come here now and the other thing is we got to do is uh, in the budget of 2023, they announced uh, funding to uh, do the master plan or whatever it is for a new long term care center here. Okay. So, so we got to follow up on that. We can continue that yeah. further. Uh, we do have guests here today and they're on time convention. Oh, they don't so we mind. Need to do a, uh, so anything, any other new business, we yeah. can defer until okay. I finish this piece of new yeah. business. And then okay. we'll come back to the meeting. Come back. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'd like to just uh, bring it along. Uh, a huge welcome to our guests and our audience here today. I'm uh, very proud that uh, we're displaying some wonderful murals and we're going to get to talk about it and have different people talk about it. Uh, but first of all, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Elder Frank Russell here. Frank about 10 years ago, got involved with me about doing a part of reconciliation in my role as the mayor. And we started by, in perpetuity, having the Big Buff flag here at the town hall. And we've done other things. And it, it seems like now we really got some wind in our sails as we're working towards reconciliation. So I thought, first of all, I would bring up Mr. Marcus Goss because Marcus is the artist that came up with these designs for our uh, council and our community. 
but he worked very closely with our manager of uh, economic development, Mr. Mike Radder. So a great thanks to you, Mike, because without your leadership in your Office of Economic Development, this would not happen and we would not have the prestigious guests here today. So Marcus, if I can call you up and speak a little bit about your uh, hieroglyphics, your Mi'kmaq designs and so forth. Easy, Marcus Goss. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Marcus Goss. Pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Council, guests, uh, and staff. Thank you to Mike Gratter. Very privileged to have, uh, I guess, be part of this project. Uh, the, the major part of it was to be inclusive. That was the major part of this project. It wasn't just to show Mi'kmaq presence. Uh, it was to show the presence of various groups. So these signs are actually called friendship signs. And you may ask yourself, why is it called a friendship sign? Well, uh, this particular sign honors uh, the Mi'kmaq heritage of Bay St. George, known as New Geohonic which is very fitting for GH2 energy, uh, called Project New Geohony, which means land across the sea. Sorry, uh, sand blown over the sea, facing George. Uh, the second one here is, is, is the Acadian flag. And, uh, and then the third one here is the uh, U.S. Uh, Air Force Randall. Okay, And we see a common theme, which is these double curves. I always get a lot of people, I used to get my father saying, Marcus, what is that, you know, what does that curve represent? You know, what is that? You're using that and everything. Well, it's actually a petroglyph. Uh, right now, we're a part of a, of a Mi'kmaq renaissance. There's a Mi'kmaq renaissance going on throughout Mi'kmaq Gi, known as Mi'kmaq territory. And there's a lot of art being produced in Brunswick, PEI, Nova Scotia, and we're a part of it, you know, uh, and it's very important to show indigenous presence, but also to, to celebrate other cultures as well. So what this double curve represents right here, it's important to explain it, seeing it's in every one of them, the double curve is the life cycle of a person. So one curve, let's say, okay, so this curve right here, uh, represents uh, uh, youth. The middle is becoming a seat, uh, sorry, but the middle is middle age, and the curve on the right is becoming a uh, senior or an elder. And then the elder traditionally had a role of teaching the youth about culture. And then there's continuous learning and development that occurs. And that's what we're trying to do is promote educational awareness, cultural awareness, and to show community connectedness, which is very fitting for a town community college. And uh, so what these curves represents is us holding hands and connecting, not only uh, community-wise, but spiritually and culturally. And we're also honoring and celebrating the other cultures that are part of BC George. That's very important. It's very important to show honor and to celebrate other cultures. Um, in this particular one where the Acadian flag is, is uh, present, uh, these two different uh, triangular curves are actually found on women's peaked hats, men's long coats, uh, and various uh, big regalia and clothes. And uh, it's very interesting because the women are the keepers of water and the men are the keepers of fire. So uh, with women being the keepers of water, uh, they would wear uh, these patterns to show to honor water on their peak tents. So I thought it would be very uh, interesting to put water in where mainland is on the Port of Port Peninsula to honor mainland and all the various cultures uh, of Atlantic Canada because uh, Acadian people are maritime coastal people, which is very interesting as well. And then some people say to me, Marcus, what is going on with that curve over there, the one with the uh, 
you know the uh, the red one there with four and those are to honor the four seasons and the four directions and where i couldn't get the big ma flip big ma star in here I, I wanted to show that we're trying to honor uh in all the four seasons and all the four directions that we honor all the cultures present and uh, we celebrate uh, diversity. And the middle part of that is supposed to be the middle of a flower. So uh, if you look at a flower, the middle of the steaming, I think it's called, uh, that shows the blooming of the flower, the prime of our life. And it's also to show that we're in the midst of a cultural renaissance and a community boom, and there's lots of great things going on. And uh, culture, creates a uh, vitality, it creates energy and beauty to our to our town. And uh, the mayor wanted me to describe the Mi'kmaq star. It's one of our oldest symbols. It's over 500 years old. It's uh, Blokowicz, that's star in Mi'kmaq, Blokowicz. Okay, also some refer to it as Waso. Okay, and basically the white, there's various teachings on the Mi'kmaq star. Now, one of my favorite is, is that there's eight points. There used to be seven districts of the Mi'kmaq, but the eighth point is actually Newfoundland, <laughs> Newfoundland and Damakur. Because you gotta understand, 500 years ago, there wasn't a province of Newfoundland, the province of Nova Scotia, the province of New Brunswick. It was called Mi'kmaq or Mi'kmaq territory. And Mi'kmaq, Mi'kmaq people have been coming to Newfoundland, believe it or not, since the beginning of time. It's not a new thing where they where you just came over from Nova Scotia in the 1600s, and La Fischel, you know, Luke Benoit. No, we've been here since the beginning of time with the Biathlon, you know? And uh, so that's a whole different discussion. My, my friend Paul Pike would, uh, would like to be a part of that one, I'm sure. And the, the northern, the, the, the top part is white because it's the land of ice and snow. Uh, it's red on the bottom because as we go towards the equator, it gets warmer, Caribbean equator. Um, also too, uh, the, it's yellow on the east to show that the sun rises in the east, which is why we're known as people of the dawn, you know, people of the first light, it's because we are the first to be in light. And then on the west, it gets darker, the sun sets in the west to show it gets black, BC, you know, and, um, also, as well, it's meant to show uh, unity amongst all the nations uh, on Earth. So it's it's just as important as the Star of David is to the Jewish people. It's a very important uh, symbol of our culture. It's a petroglyph carving in the stone, and this actually this symbol is actually carved into the ground in Bedford, Nova Scotia. And uh, they actually have a monument there, like a little sit down area. I haven't been there, but I've been to Kitchikuchik National Park in Nova Scotia, and they have over 500 petroglyphs in that park. And I based my art upon them, you know, because that's the art of a lot of our ancestors here. Because 85% of us, according to Statistics Canada, is Mi'kmaq in BC George. So uh, it's important that we honor diversity. And it's great for uh, for our youth for the, for the future. So they can look they can look at a, uh, a piece of art or big master art and say, you know, that's a part of uh, my culture. I'm big ma and I'm proud. Blah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes, Anyway, I'd like to uh, invite a very good friend of mine, uh, Chief Jenny Gray. <laughs> We were told that twice in one week you've been in our council chambers, Chief. So, uh, but I just want to say before I bring you up to speak about uh, our indigenous culture and the role you're playing and why it's so important, is I have to commend you of your support for this green project, which is a healing project for the planet. And I've been watching you on the world stage on your travels and uh, but your leadership on this is very, very important. And I admire you for that. Uh, I did see also uh, kind of what Deputy Mayor Susan Dallow was saying that you put up a post a little while ago about a new time. And uh, we need that in our society. So that, that was very moving. So with further ado, I'm going to call upon Chief Jenny Gray.
Thanks, Mom. That's really nice of you to say. Um, stepping into this role has been a, a whirlwind. I, uh, someone said the other day, they're referring to you in our cart says the uh, frequent flyer chief. And I thought, well, better be the frequent flyer chief than never come into my office chief. So uh, it'll always be a, a priority to me to be wherever, at every table that I can be at to advocate for us and to be educated on anything that's happening. So in regards to wind energy, I mean, you know, we have to be at tables that allow us to understand these projects and affect our people and our, and our environment. So that'll always be something that I'll be advocating for and pushing for, whether it be in Germany or Texas Cove or Denmark or here. Yeah. So that's really important to me. Um, I'm really grateful to be here today to you know, celebrate this. This is amazing. Marcus, again, congratulations. You've been, uh, you know, so important to our people here uh, on the island and on representing us and, you know, showing. I've always had a, an issue growing up, not seeing a reflection of myself as a Mi'kmaq woman, but not just a Mi'kmaq woman. I'm a Mi'kmaq woman with English and Irish ancestry. So there's all parts of us that we need to represent and need to celebrate. And this is, you know, this is truth and reconciliation. This is truth and reconciliation action. So um, these are beautiful pieces, and this is a great way for you to tell us story of your community because you know, colonization, you know, there's there's dark parts of it, there's also parts of it that made your town who it is today. And uh, you know, when we bring in things to apply, as yeah. long as we can do it in a good way, in a responsible way, there's a lot of a lot of good things to come that. So I want to say congratulations to your council and the community for continuing to really like you set them up for the rest of our, in our community. We have 67 communities and if everyone can be doing things the way Stephen Gulf does them, I, I quite often hold them to the bar and say, go to Stephen Gulf and look at what they're doing now. So, you know, I thank you and I thank you so much for all the work that you do and congratulations again, Mark. It's another, another job well done. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for that, Chief Bray. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to call a very good friend of mine, uh, Mr. Tony Kornack. Mr. Tony Kornack is the president of our Francophone Association provincially, for Newfoundland and Labrador. And we've been working the last couple of years. We actually started with uh, Deputy Mayor Susan Fallow, working with our French associations, uh, both provincially and in Atlantic Canada. And we have had it actually noted in motions of council that we would start working towards uh, becoming more of a bilingual, which is uh, a requirement actually as a Canadian citizen, and it is in our charter. So at this time, I'm going to call upon Mr. Tony Konek. Bonsoir! And we'll talk about our Acadian flag, sir. Merci, Thank you, uh, Mayor. Bonjour, good afternoon. I will be very brief because it's been a long uh, hour and a uh, hour and a half. Sorry about that. <laughs> I certainly want to uh, thank and congratulate the town of Stephenville on the beautiful mural that they've installed here in the chamber. It certainly is uh, appreciated. It certainly is uh, rewarding and it certainly is gratifying that when we see things like this, it certainly entices us and, and, and enhances us to celebrate our cultures that enriches our communities. So I thank you very much for that. I always tell people, you know, uh, we, I go around and uh, we talk about the French and again, Steve was very unique. He, the Acadians have been here for years as well. Steve has been known as, as an Acadian village. And our ties with the Mi'kmaq has been insurmountable. We've been so close with the years, centuries. And we look at the, the insignia that, 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 that's displayed in front of your town hall. It says, La Ville de Stephenville, Town of Stephenville. I thank you for that, and I look forward to our continued discussions of the projects that we've been, been talking about here in, in, in the town of Stephenville and in regions on the West Coast. And we wish you every success. On journey, Walaan, thank you. Merci. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, uh, Monsieur Cornet. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for that. Thank you. I just want to say that. Uh, we have embarked, I guess, as a community to uh, hold on to our culture. And today is a, a critical day for us, signifying and murals how important it is to us and having distinguished people here in our council chambers. Uh, so, as uh, Mr. Cornack said in the same 1700s, the Acadians were expelled out of Acadia, and a lot of them came to 
Stephenville and Newfoundland and Port of Port. A lot of them went to New Orleans down in, in the US also. But the Mi'kmaq and the French had unity and ties and they, they came together as a culture. But in the 1930s, the Americans arrived here and it was termed a friendly invasion by the author John, John Cardolis. And our last mural is on our US Air Force. And it's interesting, I was thinking about it once Mike got this project going and rolling. I started my career in the Canadian Air Force, but it's because of the US Air Force that I started a career in the Canadian Air Force. I remember my dad saying to me, he said, son, I've been watching all the people that work on the base and those guys up in that control network, sunglasses on, that seems like it's a good job. And I entered the Canadian Air Force for five years in air traffic control. But in the 1930s, the Americans arrived and they started marrying our indigenous and our French people. And they have, it was turned to friendly invasion. They existed here for 25 years. The air base was commissioned in 1941. But the legacy continues with our Stigma Cultural Destination Committee. Our goal is to grow the culture of our Mi'kmaq, our French, and our relationship with U.S. Councillor Maurice Hines, his wife, his father served here on the air base. Sister Carol Hines, correct? That's right. Sister was born in Waco, Texas. Yes. Last year, we partnered with Lake City, South Carolina and the Cultural Exchange, and we had a big PBS shoot, million dollar production that took place in Stephenville in South Carolina. It's going to be aired on PBS in the month of May. I don't have the date yet. We're waiting for the release. It'll probably hit 60 to 70 percent of the U.S. PBS market. We could not buy the advertising that that's going to give us. Let me tell you. So. On the final conclusion, I just want to say that thanks to all of our dignitaries that are here today, thanks to council, thanks to management for making this happen. Because collectively, as Councilor White said, we need to move forward and we need to stay focused. And I'll use the last catchphrase from Chief Jenny Brake, we need to be kind. So on that note, thank you very much. I'm going to continue with our uh, council meeting. For those of you who've been sitting here for now, you don't have to stay. But uh, I think Mr. Paul Green's got to stay. I'm going to recognize him on the uh, recommendations he's making. So on that note, I want to thank everybody. All right. What? Yeah, can we get a, a photo with uh, uh, Mr. Cornack, Mr. Russell, and everybody? Let's get a picture with everybody. Well, we were just bigger than the ground. Counselor. Candy. Counselor. We'll call it lunch. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>